We're going to look at the carbon cycle today. The IB says you need to be able to interpret diagrams of it and develop your own. They have given in the past lots of different forms of diagrams showing how carbon is recycled in ecosystems. Most of the carbon in an ecosystem is up in the atmosphere. Carbon gets into the food chain through photosynthesis, through producers. We need to label the arrow. From here we need to get the carbon to move through our food chain. We've got animals that are eating plants. We'll call them herbivores. Guess we can go back a step and remind ourselves first trophic level, second trophic level, and we've got eating going on or consuming. I've drawn the herbivore box much smaller than the plant box for two reasons. Firstly, the plants are respiring all the time. As they respire, they're releasing CO2 back into the atmosphere. And secondly, herbivores in general do not eat all of the plant. We don't eat the roots, we just eat the leaves, or we just eat the fruit. We just eat the carrot, we don't eat the top. So we're not getting all the carbon available there. After our herbivores, we're going to have our third trophic level consumer. I'm just going to call it third trophic level. There'll be a carnivores. Maybe a fourth trophic level. We're going to have eating going up. Each of these levels is going to be doing respiration as well, releasing carbon back into the atmosphere. We're missing one important group here to finish this off and that would be our decomposers. As plants die, they're broken down by decomposers. Herbivores die, broken down by decomposers, same here and same here. And decomposers, of course, are all respiring, leading to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now we need a label for these arrows. Not living things that are eaten, so I'm going to call this death and decay. Bit morbid, but that's really what decomposers deal in. Now this is one possible form of a carbon cycle. This would be a carbon cycle within an ecosystem. However, we've missed on this the fact that there are coral reefs. There are limestone, which are big sources of carbon. Oil deposits under the ground. So if you're going to do a more complete diagram, you're going to have these other things on it. That's why you can do many different versions of the carbon cycle. There is one more arrow we can add to this. Decomposers also die. So we could add one more arrow just saying decomposers decompose other decomposers when they die. And there's my finished carbon cycle diagram for within an ecosystem. On a global scale, you would add limestone. You would add natural gas reserves under the ground. You would probably add coral reefs as other sources and sinks of global carbon. And there are many others you'll find on the internet that show the same cycling but are drawn in a very different way. Here is the same diagram again that I made for my class last year. Pretty much all the same processes but drawn in a different way. You can see here we've got the extra processes of combustion and producers. We've got fossil fuels and limestone through fossilization and combustion. But otherwise exactly the same processes again. Now that's the big thing about this topic, you have to be able to interpret a wide range of diagrams that show the same thing. The last thing to think about with this diagram really is the implications on global warming. We know that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere contributes to reflecting heat back causing global warming. Well, we're pretty sure anyway. The process that takes CO2 out is photosynthesis. Now I should probably be drawing this as a much bigger arrow, it's a very significant process. As long as we have plants, they are taking out CO2 from the atmosphere. As we remove a lot of the forests from the very productive areas of Earth, such as the Amazon forest being called the lungs of the planet, we reduce the amount of plants that are doing photosynthesis. We end up with much fewer plants doing photosynthesis, meaning much less CO2 being taken out. And as in any system, when you reduce one process, you end up moving the balance point around. Or if we continue to reduce the number of plants on the planet in the really productive areas, we reduce the size of the photosynthesis arrow. These processes are mostly still occurring. We contribute to increase CO2 in the atmosphere. So we do have to be aware that there are implications in our actions, and the carbon cycle does show part of these.